Good morning and welcome back to my channel. My name is Christine and we are going to talk about the Bucilla Vintage Halloween Kit. Uh, my plan originally was to open this up and look through the contents with you and then I remembered that I did that in a previous video. So if you would like to see mm, kind of like the unboxing of this kit, I think I do that in video number two, I believe, two or three. I'll put it below which one it is uh, so you can go back and see, but um, maybe I'll do another kind of a, just a quick review. I, I'll go, I guess I'll do that. I'll do a review of what's in this kit, even though I do talk about it in that other video too, if you want to see it. Uh, okay, so it is about the end of August 2022, and I have really all of a sudden just felt like working on this kit and one night I just opened it up and started working on them and I've actually completed three of them already. <laughs> and that's when I decided, hmm, maybe I should make a video about this. So uh, that's what I'm here to do today. So I'm kind of going in backwards in, in sort of a different order with it. But this is the Bucilla Vintage Halloween Kit and it's got these lovely six ornaments here. And what else do we get in the kit? Um, well, we get all the felt, which I have already cut up. So here's one. I'll just show you because like I said, I don't have the, well, before we get to the felt, let's let's look at the floss. Okay, so these are, these are the colors that you get. Got some green, purple, red, white, orange. You know, your typical Halloween colors. So very pretty. The beads that it came with are your standard red, black, clear. And then it came with these really fun little gold beads right here. Uh, from a previous video, you might have seen that I was storing my beads in a different compartment. It was a, sort of a round thing that I bought at Walmart that had these little flippy tabs on it. And those tabs were not staying closed. And I, that was like a disaster waiting to happen. So, um... I had these left over from my brief stint into diamond painting, which I think I only did one diamond painting and realized that that wasn't for me. So I've got these little containers that I'm going to repurpose for my Bucilla kits. So you get these really pretty gold beads. And then these are so fun. If you can see in there, they're like these star-shaped sequins. So cute. So that's what you get with those. And then um, I went ahead and already, because I've been working on this kit, have already put my sequins into the little sequin um, compartment that I keep it in. So the ones that it came with are these gold ones here. Uh, I believe the red, purple, uh, I think this green. Uh, I'm, I'm not sure which one it is, but these are colors. I pretty much had almost all of them already so I just added the bag that came with this in with the ones oh black obviously of course and this orange and the white ones um, I wanted to give a tip real quick maybe this is something somebody else has already thought of but if you haven't I'm going to share my tip with you so there is something about these white sequins that stick to your fingers, they stick so bad. I don't really notice it with any of the other sequins, but these these white ones stick so bad and they get all over everything and I don't know what it is. It's these white sequins and also the white beads. So my tip is I cut a piece of fabric softener that I like to keep with my kit. And if you just rub your fingers on it and then grab these, see, they don't, they don't stick. So if you find that they're, you're dealing with some sequins that are sticking to your fingers, just uh, yeah, just get a, a dryer sheet and rub your fingers on it, and voila, no more sticking. So I always keep one of those nearby when dealing with the white ones. Okay, back to the kit. All right, um, like I said, I have already completed three of them. Now, the directions say that the first one that you should do in this kit is the pumpkin. But I did not start with that one because for some reason I thought this one looked a little easier to start with. And uh, so I started with that one. So I did that one first. Then I did the cat, which is 
more challenging than the pumpkin, but I did the pumpkin third. Okay, so I can tell you that I think what was making me nervous about this one is these string, these beaded strings here. Um, I was I was unsure how to do that, um, so I wanted to, I don't know, warm up a little bit before I did that one. Okay, let's see my finishes. Here is the first one right here, this adorable skull. I don't think I made any changes on this one and stitched it exactly like it was. Oh, no, I did make a change. I actually, for the beaded cord, I ended up doing a, a white cord. I think they wanted all the cords to be, the corded hangers to be black, but I went ahead and did white. Here's these gorgeous gold beads. They seem a little like I maybe should have reinforced them a little bit. They're a little a little hangy, but <laughs> I think they'll be okay. I mean, this is just going to hang there and doing nothing, so it's got a little bit of a, uh, did I satin stitch that, or is that a felt? Let me see. No, that's a satin stitch. I did a pretty good job on that, um, <laughs> which I'm surprised because uh, I do not like doing the satin stitching, and I usually struggle with it, but that, that actually looks pretty darn good. Okay, maybe it's not satin stitched. It might have just been like some straight stitches. I don't know. I'm still working on my stuffing, uh, trying to not do too much and not do too little. I feel like I maybe wanted to have put a little bit more in around the edges. It's a little sparse around the edges, but here's the back looking pretty good. This called for an outline stitch right here. Um, on the bow, but it only called for, I think, like one strand of floss, and so it's kind of hard to see, but I think it's more just supposed to be kind of an accent, but adorable. Yes. All right, so that was the first one that I did. The second one I did, and so far this one I just is my favorite. I did the cat. So look at, look at how precious that is. So the most challenging part of this one was satin stitching the nose and the teeth. That was a challenge. So let's get a close up there. And you can see, I think I had to do this one more than one. I think I had to do this one more than once. And, but yes, in the long run, I, I'm, I'm getting a little better at my satin stitching. So it's got the little bows, I mean the little beads hanging on the end there. Cute, a couple of French knots around here for this, the uh, whiskers. And yeah, I don't think I made any changes on this at all. Just did everything like it called for. Let's see the back. Here's the back. Um, looks pretty good. My applique stitches are still a bit more uneven than I would like, you know, sometimes kind of still trying to find my way with that. But I'm learning. I mean, yeah. Looks good. Okay, so that was adorable. Then I thought I was ready to go ahead and do the pumpkin. And here is how beautiful that turned out. Look at that. So the little um, mask is only attached right here and right there so that the ends kind of hang free. Got to use the star sequins in this one, which I was excited about. I mean, oh, is that hat adorable? Um, the most challenging part of this one was this pom-pom at the top. Don't even ask me. I did not even understand how on earth I was supposed to do that. So there were a couple of things on this one I wasn't sure how to do. Um, I wasn't sure... When I added this bead strand, if I was supposed to go all the way through to give the pumpkin some dimension. And so I reached out to an Instagram friend and I did not ask her permission to use her name. So I'm not going to use her name in this, but she was kind enough to guide me along on both stitching the bead strands and also making the pom-pom. And inevitably, I you kind of have to just find your way with this. And then I ended up clipping them even more um, to make them look, look a little bit fluffier. But <laughs> don't even ask me how I did that. I just kept finagling it until it looked like a pom-pom. And so the beaded strings, 
the concern. When you do the beaded string, you... So if you've never done the bead strands before, you string four beads on, then you have to take, you know, take a, take a stitch, come back up two beads back, and then go through the, sec the last two beads again, and then do your next one. Now, I wasn't sure if I was supposed to just grab just this top layer or, or go all the way through, and my concern was how to make the back look nice, so my friend also said that when she was finished, so here's what the back looks like with mine. Now, it looks kind of fine, so you can tell this is where I started. And I had taken, you know, did a few bead strands, and then I sort of realized that if I am strategic about where I come up and down, that I could do like this like little dimpled look on the back here. But I didn't do that at the beginning, so that's why that's kind of weird right there. But, you know, it's a pumpkin, and sometimes they have weird dimples in them, so that's what I'm telling myself anyway. Um, now, my friend on Instagram, she had a brilliant idea, and she actually went back and did an outline stitch over this to um, sort of finish it off and give it a nice look on the back. And I was going to do that, but when this was done, I thought, you know what, that looks okay, you know, just because I was strategic about sort of the way I went up and down when I was doing the beads. So kind of just have to find your way, but I, I did, uh, I did want to put it out there that that was a good idea. She had to do an outline stitch on the back. The only other change I made on this is it does ask for a beaded strand you know, a strand of beads to go along this outside edge as well. But when I was getting ready to get to that part, and I thought, you know, I think in my personal preference, I, I thought it looked okay without because I kind of like the way the applique stitch looks on the outside of that. But just know, let me show you the picture, the preview, that, see, they do add that extra string of beads on the outside. So that's up to you, you know, if, if you do that or not, you know. I don't know, I was kind of done with the bead strand. Wanted to move on to the next one. I get a little impatient that way. It's not a good quality to have, but. <laughs> um, and one other, oh yeah, another change I made is I added a sequin for an orange sequin on top of the, uh, the eye. It didn't call for that. So, okay, I'm going to pause this. It says my phone is getting hot, so. Let me go ahead and pause this and I'll be back to finish up. All right, phone has cooled down a little bit and I got myself a fresh cup of coffee. Set that right there out of the way. And uh, I'm just gonna go ahead and finish this off and we're gonna talk about the three ornaments that are left. So this is the one that I have chosen to do. Next is the ghost. Let's look at the preview again. Right there. So lots of sequins on the mask, and he's, his little hand there is holding a stick, holding one of those masquerade masks, and that's going to call for a chenille stick. Um, so where are we at with this so far? I cut the pieces. Um, yes, I cut the numbers off of them. It's very obvious to me what goes where, so I felt safe doing so. I know a lot of people will not cut the, the little number of their pieces, which is wise. I probably shouldn't either. I already have the corded hanger ready to go because I made all my corded hangers at the at the same time. And so this is kind of how this looks. I'm going to sequin this together and go ahead and add it to the mask and then applique those together. And then one change here on the little face. So that's going to be the little collar. The only change I'm going to make on this is that, okay, it calls for these little black dots right here for the eyes. And then I was looking all over because it had little black dots, all these here for the nose and the, I mean the eyes and the mouth, but I could not find the little black dot on any of my felt pieces in the whole kit for the nose. And then when I looked closer at the instructions, you're supposed to satin stitch a circle for the nose. And I said, nope, I am not going to do that. I just cut myself another little black circle for the nose because why would I try to satin stitch a circle when I could just add some felt? So, yes, that just did a little freehand with some extra black. 
felt there. So this is going to be adorable and it's not going to take too long to get this together. So this is going to be the next one I work on. I'm back and I have an adorable finished ghost ornament to show you this morning that I'm really excited about. I say that about every one of them because every time I finish one, I just am always amazed at how adorable they turn out. She is very cute. I don't think I had any challenges with this one. Like I had mentioned, I didn't do satin stitching for the nose. I cut a piece of felt for it instead. Um, okay, I guess I did have a little bit of a challenge uh, adding the chenille stem for the stick. I had never done that before, and it was a bit of a challenge, and I'm going to have to change up my technique a little bit because it was kind of fiddly, and I mean, it looks okay in the end. I just feel like it was more of a struggle than it should have been, so I need to figure that out before I get to the spider because uh, the spider's leg ha legs have all the the uh, pipe cleaners in them. So I'll have to work on that a little bit better. But I just love his little floating hand here holding his mask. And like the other ones, the mask is only attached in the middle, so it's kind of hanging loose there. Um, I'm, I think I struggled a little bit when I have to add, when I have to attach two stuffed pieces together. It's a little... Um, I don't know. I'm still finding my way with it. It looks good in the end, but it, it feels a little more challenging than it should, adding those pieces together, because they don't really tell you how. They just say, attach this to that. So I think I just kind of went and did some tacking stitches just along the way there to kind of hold it. But not much else to say about this one. Uh, I stuffed it a little bit more than the skull, so I like the way I filled it in around the edges a little bit better here so but didn't still didn't make it too thick just just enough to give it some dimension but super adorable and I am excited to have it to add to my collection okay on to the owl next I'll see you when I get started all right I thought uh, as I get started on the owl that I would just show you a little bit about the scissors I use so originally when I did my first felt kit a little while ago, I had these scissors already on hand and I had to make I, the uh, little locking mechanism that keeps them closed broke many years ago because I've had these scissors for a lot of years. So I just sort of crafted out of uh, electrical tape this little and some cardboard. I made a sheath for this to keep them closed because otherwise it's just they're dangerous. Um, I love these. So these are the spring loaded. So you, you, they naturally want to be open. So you just use them to, you know, you just have to squeeze them closed. So they're like less stra less strain on your hands and they're getting, they're starting to get a little bit dull. So just recently I purchased a newer version of this. Now these are, feel more lightweight. Uh, I don't think they make this exact one anymore. I couldn't find it. But this, I think, is the replacement, and so it has this little slide locking mechanism. But the only thing is, uh, these is they're not as smooth the way they open and close. It might just be a defective one that I have, but it's, it's, you know, you can, if you look at the blades, like when it pops open, it kind of has like a little catch there. So when you're doing really intricate cutting, you don't really want to have, you know, it, you know, a mind of its own basically so I have tried oiling this and doing whatever I can and it's just this just isn't as good of a pair of scissors by the way these are Fiskars uh, I don't know exactly I can probably put a link below with the what uh, type they're like the spring loaded but there's so many Fisker scissors I could link the ones below uh, I just am not as happy with the newer version of it so I still like to use these even though they're not as sharp but they're just so much easier they just open and close easier and they're real smooth um, but I do like to, I do like those. Now you don't certainly have to, everybody has their own preference of scissors that they like to use for these kinds of things. So feel free to use whatever you want. Now, when you cut these, it's real important that you try to cut all of the stamp off. And I find that that's kind of hard to do. Um, it takes practice and sometimes you have to go back. I find it easier, even though I'm right-handed, so I naturally want to cut this way, you know, I kind of want to cut around something that way, but I find that I do a better job cutting the stamp off if I keep the stamp over to the left side of the scissors, which feels a little bit awkward, but I can see, 
you know, a little bit more that I'm, I'm actually cutting the stamp off. Can you see how it's like, I can see that it's being left behind. If I do it the other way, I almost always have a stamp left over that I have to go and clean off. Now, this is all just, you know, it's just a minor inconvenience, but <laughs> um, it is kind of a pain though when the stamp is left behind. Now, even when I do it this way, I don't always do a, a perfect job and you kind of have to go back and clean it up. It's a little bit slow going, cutting these pieces out, trying to get the stamp off, but I kind of find it relaxing. Sometimes I just will go through, like I'll probably go through this evening and just cut all these pieces out because I really enjoy doing that part of it. So anyway, I'll go ahead and just finish doing this one. Now, I know I mentioned this always and time and time again, I'm cutting off that number, which is important, but so what you could do, you know, what some people do is just, if you're not going to use these pieces right, right away, you can just do this and leave the piece, uh, the number attached to it like that, like so. But I know very well where these pieces go in the owl, that they're the two parts the two white parts that go on the eye. So I don't feel the need to keep the number there. But now, because I'm not holding these <laughs> real close to me because I'm filming, I did not do a real good job making that a smooth circle. But that's okay, because if I've learned anything, felt is very forgiving. And when you're appliquing this piece on, you know, all those little kind of edges and not round parts uh, just seem to kind of disappear when you do the applique. It's almost like working with clay, you know, felt can be very moldable. So I like that. So I'm not going to keep this number on and I am going to go ahead and just cut it the way I showed you that I don't like to cut because I almost always leave the stamp behind. But now yeah, you can see I did a pretty good job getting all of that edge off. So, all right, there we go. One piece out of many. I'm gonna go finish cutting the rest of these and then, uh, I don't know, maybe I'll, I might show you a little bit more about how I do some of the outline stitch, but I might not. I might just uh, go ahead and finish this and then just show you the finished owl. Okay, I'm gonna go do some cutting. See you in the next clip. Okay, to do the beading on these, uh, whenever there's one of those black dots that you look to see what color bead you need, and it's very simple. You just come up from the back after you've tied a knot in your thread, your embroidery floss, one strand of embroidery floss. Then you grab a sequin, and you just have to make sure that it's cup side up. So I usually keep my sequins in uh, I usually, th there's like this little beading mat that, um, hold on, let me de-static my fingers. Okay, there we go. So yeah, cup side up. This right here is a bead mat from, I think Beadalon makes it. It comes in a big sheet and it almost feels like velvet. And I just cut that down to size and put it in a little container. Uh, anything in Altoid tin or wherever you have. That's just what I like to use. That's what I use for my beading with cross stitch too. So anyway, you just get your sequin and then you grab a bead like that and pull it down. So see, you have a sequin with a bead on top. And then when you go back down under, see what I mean about the static on those things? Um, then when you go back down under, you just need to make sure you don't go through the bead. You just go next to the bead, like so. And then very slowly, just tug it, and there you go. And then you just go right over to the next one, right there. And same thing, grab another sequin, cup side up. 
grab a bead. I'm, it's always more difficult doing this stuff in front of the camera because I have to be a little bit farther away from myself than I usually am. So sometimes I'll hold the sequin with my thumb like that and then just make sure you get the bead out of the way and go down and there you go. And you just keep doing that around until you have them all. Okay. So for the applique, you'd use a different needle. So the, the kits come with two different needles. If you can see the difference there, you got a beading needle, which is really thin, that goes through the bead. And it's a little bit harder to thread through the eye because it has a really tiny eye. The uh, embroidery needle for doing the embroidery is a little bit thicker and it's a little bit has a bit of a blunt tip on it and it is much easier to thread. So for doing the embroidery, uh, the outline stitch calls for two strands of black. So we'll go ahead and get that threaded there. And I just like to tie a knot at the end there by just twisting it. I kind of do just do one of those kind of knots. However, you can get a knot down to the other side. Okay, for the outline stitch. I have not cut this piece out yet, but that's okay. You can still do the outline. The outline stitch is going to go along this dark line right here. To do the embroidery stitch, you have the knot there. Then you just go... So, the outline stitch, you're going to always want to have the thread be down toward the bottom of the stitch. I don't really know how else to describe it. The, I think it's called the stem stitch. You're going to do the exact same thing, but it's going to, the thread's going to be up at the top. So just always make sure you have this down at the bottom. It takes a little bit of getting used to, but I find, so where you come up from, you just go a little bit farther away from it, and then you kind of do almost like a back stitch like that. So you just come back. I am terrible at describing these. There's probably better tutorials online for this than what I'm showing you. But anyway, you just kind of keep doing that same thing. So then you're going to come down, you're going to go over, and I find that you just want to keep your stitches really small, especially around a curve. You know, it's going to be tempted, to, you're going to be tempted to go clear out here, but it looks much nicer if you just take a nice small stitch and go right back where the last stitch came up, making sure that this embroidery floss stays down toward the bottom. And you pull it like so. Have that hanging down. Take the next stitch over like so. Come across. You don't want to pull too tight because you don't want to pucker it, but you want to pull it tight enough that it makes like a nice straight line. And then you just keep moving on down the line just like that. Now when you go around a curve, like a circle, you want to take even tinier stitches than I'm taking. You can get away with a little bit longer of stitch on the straight lines, but when you go around a curve, the tinier stitches you take, the smoother your circle will be, I have found. And that's how you do the outline stitch. All right. See you in the next clip. I'm back. It has been a week, uh, about a week since the last clip, and it is Saturday, September 17th now, and this is what I got done this week. Uh, I didn't, didn't really, it doesn't really take a week to do this. I just don't work on it all that much because I do my cross stitching, but I just kind of worked uh, on the little pieces and parts uh, in the evenings. And this is what we have. Now, I don't really assemble it in the order that it recommends because I think it wanted me to stuff the body and put it together before adding all of the uh, the feet and the wings and everything. But I kind of like to do that part last because when I do my applique and my stitching, I like to go all the way through and just not worry about what the back looks like. And then when I'm done, I can assemble it and then the the back won't have anything. I don't have to worry about 
dealing with it with the stuffing. So, you know, I, I just kind of go about it my own way. <laughs> Don't always follow the directions exactly. As a matter of fact, in that last clip, when I was showing you, I was putting on the white sequins on this and I hadn't read the instructions yet. And then when I uh, went a little bit further into the project and was looking at the picture, I realized that there was not supposed to be sequins there, that those dots were just the markings for where I was supposed to do the straight stitching. So I took out those few stitches that those few sequins that you saw me do, but the process is still the same. That is still how you do the sequins. Okay, uh, what else did I do? I put the, I pinned my cording here because I can't tell you how many times I stitch these together and forget to put the cording in. So I do have that pinned there to remind myself not to forget to embed that in between when I stitch and stuff the head. So, okay, so we've got, so what I have left to do then are, here's the eyeglasses that I did the sequins on the front. So I need to applique the two pieces together, the front and the back, no stuffing required, just need to applique those together. Uh, these are the wings, and you can see that I have done the embroidery on that, which was a combination of an outline stitch in red, um, uh, just a kind of a running stitch in white with the little French knots in between. So, and then the sequins. So these do need to be um, applique to their back with a little bit of stuffing in between those two. Um, and then yes, I went ahead and did a little bit of applique on the nose there, the beak I should say, stuffed it. These were supposed to be satin stitched, the black part of the eye, the pupil. Uh, I went ahead and did not do the satin stitch, I just cut some felt pieces there. Um, I just need to get better at my satin stitch. I, I know it seems like I'm avoiding it, and I am because... <laughs> I'm not that good at it, but it is a skill that's worth knowing, and I will practice my satin stitch and get better at it, but for now, I just cut felt pieces. So then the straight stitches here for the eye, more embroidery. This was a little tricky to do along the edge up here, but some of the similar embroidery. Um, once again, I think, they, I think the instructions called for adding the two pieces backing and front piece together before adding this, but I just like to do all of these parts so that I can make a mess of the back and then hide it all with the, the stuffing at the end. Okay, so yeah, the all of the intricate stuff is done and now the assembly just needs to be done. So I, like I said, I will stuff and applique the front of the head together. I will stuff and applique the body. So then it's gonna be like that. And then uh, I will stuff and applique the wings and those will go there like so like that and then that will be attached to that and this will be oops get those lined up like so and those will be stitched on there and I will come back when I have it all finished to show you what it's going to look like. But you kind of get the rough idea. It's going to be super cute. All right. I'll check in when I get that all done. See you soon. Good morning and welcome to the first day of fall here in the Northern Hemisphere. It is September 22nd today and I am, I have a, another ornament finish to show you and I'm getting ready to start the very final one. So let's first show the finish I have. Isn't he cute? Oh, I just love the way he turned out so much. This one was a lot of work. It took uh, quite a bit of time but worth it. Uh, I think I talked about him more in the last clip when I showed you all the individual pieces. So really all I need to show you now is just the assembly. Uh, did some light, light stuff. I'm still kind of trying to figure out how you're supposed to attach two stuffed pieces together. So what I do is just kind of go around 
uh, I just try to go around and get uh, take some tacking stitches just kind of around the front and then because his head was so floppy I then took some uh, just some little tacking stitches in the back um, with black you can't really see them they're just you can kind of see I just took like maybe three or four little stitches around there just to kind of hold it steady but this is how it all looks um, yep so my stitching on the side there I also I know this is just like really picky stuff but whenever you have to attach um, when the front of the felt is different than the backing you know they, they recommend that you obviously use the thread that matches the front piece but then what that does is it allows you to see your stitches on the back which I don't like as much I mean I probably would if I had like perfectly nice neat stitches but because I don't then it just kind of shows you that my stitches aren't perfect but if you're having fun that is the point right yes his uh, glasses are only attached up um, in the middle here that's kind of it has a line there to show where to attach so they're just kind of gives it a, a fun kind of three-dimensional um, aspect of it when they're hanging off the side like that so very cute not much more to say about this little guy um, I think I was going to also talk about um, what I mentioned when I was showing you the outline stitch and maybe I did say this in the last clip when I was showing you how to do that outline stitch I was going to say that you know there's tons of different embroidery stitches and nobody says there's no you know felt police out there that are going to tell you you need to do certain stitches certain places so if you don't like doing the outline stitch and you want to do a straight stitch or a back stitch or a stem stitch or split stitch whatever you like you can really do whatever you want on these kits nobody's going to care I think they just recommend these because I think they're sort of supposed to be beginner friendly and they you know want them to be easy but yeah you know I say feel free make it your own I mean if you really like to do embroidery you can just think about all the different embroidery stitches you can embellish like in the plain areas you could just go really crazy with these so feel free I am giving you permission to step outside the box and do whatever you want with these things and I am sort of feeling the need as I move along with these kits to do just that because uh, there's there's no rules right there's no rules in crafting Okay, I wanted to show you something as I started. So the next one, let me put this cute guy aside and uh, let me take a sip of coffee. I'll be right back. Okay, so the final one in the kit is this spider and I was going to show you, I cut all of the pieces and I was gonna show you all the tiny little pieces when they were cut up, but then it was night and my lighting wasn't good. So I went ahead and started working on him and as I was working on him I started doing some of the easy stuff first and then I'm like you know I, I gotta attempt one of those legs just to see if they're as scary as they look because the directions recommend that you use a, a chenille stick or pipe cleaner and I didn't realize that they recommended that you use a black one and I do not have any black, black ones on hand but I do have a whole bunch of white ones so I've been making the white ones work but if you were to do this kit I recommend getting the black chenille stems because they the technique that I do does kind of show a little bit of the white does show through a little bit but I, I wanted to show you just in case you're new like me and um, want to see how I did it I'll show you okay so the piece that's cut the leg this is how it looks when you cut it out and it says to fold it in half and when you fold it in half I mean can you see like how tiny that thing is how skinny it's going to be and I think the last time I put in a pipe cleaner in a piece I ended up sewing it and then trying to stuff the pipe cleaner in there and that did not work so it's ideal I hope the light is good here let me see it's a cloudy day here for the first day of fall so it definitely feels like fall so you get your piece cut like this and what I'm going to do and what I have found works is that right from the get-go you want to start uh, you want to have the, the pipe cleaner in the felt when you start that worked out better for me now I've already done all the leg this is the last one I have to do so I've had a little bit of practice so I can show you my technique so let me grab my needle 
once again, I have to do this with a camera in my face and it's quite tricky. Let me move my coffee or we're going to end up with coffee everywhere. Okay, so you take one strand and you tie your little knot in the end, like so, like I have. And then what I was doing is just to get it started, you want to hide your knot on the inside like that. Okay, and then this is really tricky to do with the camera. Okay, so then I want to sew. Let me move my face here. Taking just a little bit of a, a stitch, I want to close that the top end of it. So I just I'll show you a little bit closer of what I'm doing, but just to get it started. Now this is going to be covered by a shoe, so it doesn't really matter how this tip looks. So you just want to kind of get yourself started there like that. Okay, so now that we've got that going and I got to make sure I stay in focus, you're just going to take a little piece from the outside and I try to kind of, you know, not catch the, the pipe cleaner in there. And then you grab a little piece just have a little piece there. Make sure that stays there. As I go along, this will be a little more clear. It's kind of fiddly at the beginning, getting it started. But as you move along, you just want to fold that over like that. Grab just a little piece. Can you see how I'm grabbing that there? And then grabbing another little piece here. Make sure that that, at the beginning, it always wants to get caught on the edge like that. Oh, and you'll also notice they want you to do the sequins before you do this part. And I found that it's much easier to not have the sequins in your way and to do the sequins after. So I'm just grabbing the tiniest little bites from one side and one side, and you're just doing a whip stitch or an applique stitch, which I think they're pretty much the same. As you go, grabbing, grabbing. Straighten it as you go along. knot because the thread in the Bucilla kits is not ideal and I forgot to wax up condition my thread first which always helps okay so now that I've gone a little farther with it you can sort of see let me pull it, and you want to pull it nice and tight as you go, but not too tight because then your thread will break, I have found. So you can see ever so slightly a little bit of tiny of the white chenille stem, the furs showing through. So it would be, this would look even better if they were black. So use black if you are planning on doing this kit. I should just get some chenille stems of all colors because the, the uh, they use those quite often in the kits for like, you know, legs and sticks and things like that. But you get the idea. So I am probably going to just do a little bit of either fast motion or I might just come back and show you how it looks when we're done. But we're getting there. Oops, I'm going off camera there. We're getting there. It's, it's a little slow, but I can do it much faster when I have it where I don't have a camera here. So think I might just go ahead and finish it off camera and then come back and show you what it looks like. So let me go do that and I'll be right back. Okay, I am really starting to lose my light fast here. I moved a little closer to the window, but I wanted to show you I have it all done. And once again, why you want to use the black instead of the white. And that's a little, that's a pretty fluffy little uh, pipe cleaner I was using there. 
Um, so that's it. It's really easy. That took about 10 minutes to do. Um, really simple to do. And I was going to show you why, like I said, they had recommended that you add the sequins first. And I found it's easier to sew this together without the sequins, like I just previously mentioned. But I wanted to show you that if you do that, so remember there's going to be a boot on this end here. So you can go ahead and hide your knot there, but you just go ahead and get your, so I've, I've switched over to my beading needle. And let me look here. So I'm going to come up on that first white dot right there. Um, so this is actually two legs because what you what you do when you're done is you're going to bend this like that. And then those are going to be the two legs and they're each going to have a boot on it or a hand depending on what I mean a glove, depending on which one you're doing. All right, I realized when I did those first two sequins that it was out of focus, and so I'm I'm going to just record me doing a couple more so that you can actually see the technique without it going out of focus. So I'm going to grab a sequin, and oh no, well, yes, okay. So I are, I've already come up into the next spot there, the next white dot, and I'm going to grab a sequin and a bead, like so. And try and do this without going out of focus this time. Kind of hold it in place like so. And then go down and do almost kind of like you're doing the sewing method. Don't go all the way through to the other end, like you can see there. When you pull it, make sure your thread doesn't get caught on anything. And there you go. Okay, have the sequin, and your thread has come up on the into the next dot, and nothing is going through to the other side. So I don't know. Maybe you prefer to do the sequins first. That's fine. You know, however you you find works for you. I gotta pull those a little bit tight. Make sure your sequins aren't hanging. But I did really like not having my sequins in the way when I was stitching the pipe cleaner in. Grab one more, like so. Slide it down to the right spot. Hold it with my thumb. Go down into the sequin, make sure I'm staying in focus. Go down through the sequin and up through the next dot, like so. somewhere. So, okay, I hope that helps kind of uh, in case you've never worked with the chenille stems before and embedding them inside. It's really not as scary as it seems. And now I can start looking at kits that have little skinny things on it, like deer that have skinny legs and such, because uh, now I know how to do that technique and it's just not so bad. All right, I will see you really soon with a completed spider. And I'm going to hopefully try to get this video up by the weekend. That's my goal, because I actually have completed quite a bit of the spider. But I'll save that for the next clip and show you it all. Okay, all right, I'll see you soon. Bye. Alrighty, good morning. I am back and I have a finished spider to show you. Look at how adorable. Okay, so my thoughts on this after all is said and done is that this spider was not as intimidating as I thought he was going to be. So I'm thrilled. Uh, you saw how I did the legs and uh, that really wasn't the most challenging part. I would say the most challenging part was trying to get this hat stitched on because it's uh, it, it looks like it's very flimsy right there, but I, I what I did is I attached the hat to this hand first, which that was a bit of a challenge just because this, there just wasn't a lot of stability in this little thumb here. And so that was a little bit of a challenge. But after I did that, then when I was done, I sort of maneuvered this hand and arm to where the hat was in a good place. And then just did a whole bunch of reinforcement stitches there. So it's actually quite stable. It's on there really good. So that was a little bit of a challenge. Um, if you look closely, I did satin stitch the eyes. 
So there you can kind of see. I ended up satin stitching it across, you know, doing sort of, you know, a horizontal stitch. And then when I was done, I went and just kind of did an outline stitch on both sides of the eyes to smooth it out a little bit. Um, so that ended up being easy. Uh, all of this went together really nicely. These were, you know, those little stripes that I thought were so thin really just didn't, I didn't have any problem attaching those at all. The hands and feet, the little shoes, cutting them out uh, was pretty tedious, but stitching them together really was not difficult at all. Uh, this morning I finished up doing the little laces and I originally tried using just one strand of embroidery floss to tie a little bow there and it didn't really look like a bow so I ended up making some twisted cording out of just two strands of embroidery floss and it gave it a little more stability. So, but then of course I had to tie little knots on the end there to make sure that it doesn't come unraveled. Now I just tied a bow and I think when I'm done I might put just a little dab of clear glue on the knot just to make sure that those don't come undone like when I put this in storage. But I think that's all there is to say on that. Uh, yeah, uh, let's look at the back and see. Um, yeah, I just embedded the little legs inside as I was stuffing him around, so that went really easy. Uh, not much more to say about this. Uh, I think I had a little bit of a trouble doing the outline stitch really close to the edge up here and ended up doing... Uh, what did I do there? I either did a back stitch or a split stitch, something up there, just to make that look a little better. I'm really glad that I did end up completing, attempting and completing the spire because it gave me the confidence uh, moving forward in doing some of the other kits I have that really have um, some small pieces. So, all right, I hope that you enjoyed this. I'm kind of sad to see this set has come to an end, but I've got plenty more Halloween stuff and fall stuff to work on and haven't decided what I'm going to work on next, but before I leave, I'm going to just have a little video of the whole set of all the completed ornaments to just kind of end the video and give you something just uh, fun to watch. All right, I'll see you next time. Thank you so much for watching. Um, please leave a comment if you have any questions or uh, any advice you'd like to give on maybe how you do things. I'm always open to hear how other people do things and tips and tricks that people have learned over the years. And, okay, that's it. I'll see you next time. Happy fall.